I got another video for you here. Two more vectors questions then. Uh, first one's pretty straightforward. The second one is a little bit trickier. Uh, so first of all, we've got an expression for the position vector. We're asked for the velocity, so we need to differentiate. So part A, we're going to do dr by dt to find v. Uh, that's going to give us 1 plus 4t in the i direction. And it's going to give us 3t minus 2 in the j direction. Okay. Uh, then we've got to say, when is that vector perpendicular to the vector minus i plus 2j? So again, this is now a uh, dot product of v and that vector has got to be 0. So if I put in there then, so v dot, and then we've got minus i plus 2j, and we need that to equal 0. So that's multiplying uh, the minus 1 from here with all of that. So that gives us minus 1 minus 40 plus, and then multiplying the 2 from here with uh, the j part of our vector. That gives us 6t minus 4. All of that needs to come out as 0. If you tidy up, you get 2t minus 5 equals 0. So t must equal 2.5 for that one. Okay. And then part B, find, I'll show the acceleration of the particle is constant and find its magnitude. Well, if it's constant, it will just be a number rather than being dependent on t. So we need to differentiate again. For it to be constant, remember, we, we need the t's to drop out, and they will. If you look at the i parts, that'll differentiate. And that will become, so let me write this in, so dv by dt. Differentiate the i part, 1 plus 4t just ends up being 4 in the i direction. 3t minus 2 ends up being 3 in the j direction. Uh, a little sentence that it's not dependent on t, so therefore it is constant, not dependent on t, therefore it's constant acceleration. And we're asked to find the magnitude. And magnitude then is when you replace your vector with just one number. To do that, you need to do a little bit of Pythagoras. So it's just going to be a simple 3, 4, 5 triangle, isn't it? So 3 squared plus 4 squared. Square root 6 is going to come out as 5 meters per second squared. Okay, so reasonably straightforward that one. Just remember if it asks for magnitude, to do Pythagoras. Same as if it asks for speed, you need to turn your vector into a number to get speed rather than uh, velocity, so that would be Pythagoras as well. You see that in the next question. Next question is uh, quite a lot to it. Okay, so let's have a look at it. We've got a position vector we're used to having that, but if you look at your expression there, we've got t sine t. We are going to need to use the product rule when we differentiate that because we've got two different functions times, and we've got t times in sine t. They're the product of each other. So we're going to need to use product rule to differentiate. All right. So let's start with finding uh, the velocity vector v by differentiating. So v is dr by dt. I don't know why they keep changing the letter of the position vector, but there we go. Right, so the product rule says that we should differentiate one part, leave the other bit alone, and then add it to, swap it around, differentiate the other part, leave it alone. So if I differentiate t, you get 1, leave sine t alone. So that's 1 sine t. Add it to, leave the t alone, and differentiate sine t. So leaving t alone just stays as t. Differentiating sine t goes to cos t. And that's in the i direction. Okay, remember this is using product rule. If you're not sure, go and look it up. In the j direction then, same thing, product rule again. So first of all, if I differentiate the t part, I get 1, leaves cos t alone. And then add, this time I leave the t alone and I differentiate the cos t. Now cos goes back to minus sine, so I will need to change my sine in there. Right? So I'll change that to a minus, and we're going to minus sine t in the j direction. So that's the velocity vector. So that's part of the question done. 
But then it goes on to ask us for an expression for the speed. To go from uh, velocity vector to speed, you need to do Pythagoras. So that's the i direction squared plus the j direction squared and square root at the end. The only problem is at the minute we're still in terms of t and we've got no value to put in. So this is where it gets a little bit complicated. So if I just do the square in first, so the speed squared if you like, that's uh, sine t plus t cos t all squared plus cos t minus t sine t all squared. Okay, sorry that squared should have come out of that bracket there. Uh, I'll worry about the square root in at the end. Let's just get the square in and add in done bit first. Okay, right now then, uh, if you're squaring a bracket, that's um, going to be same thing twice, isn't it? And you're going to have to use FOIL for that. So your first bracket comes out as, and I'll work over here because it gets a bit long, this expression. You get sine squared t plus t sine t cos t. Then you get another t sine t cos t. And then finally, you get a t squared cos squared t. That's the first bracket squared. Okay. If I swap colours, so red goes with this one. I'll colour that in red so you see where that's coming from. If I swap then to uh, so go for blue for the second one then, so same thing again, look, it's really two brackets next to each other. Foil again, this time we get cos squared t. We get a minus t sine t cos t and you're going to see the same sort of things popping up here there's going to be a lot of cancelling out in a second another t sine t cos t and then finally a t squared sine squared t okay um, now these uh, mixes of sines and coses we've got two being added two being taken away so they will cancel out so that tidies it up a little bit if i rewrite now then so that leaves us with uh, a sine squared t. Then we've got, uh, we've also got a cos squared t. And then we've got our uh, t squared sine squared. So we've got a t squared sine squared t. And we've got a t squared cos squared t. Now, when I see sine squared and cos squared together being added, it jumps out at me that I need to use my trig identities here that sine squared plus cos squared equals 1. Okay. Now, I've arranged it as well nicely. Maybe a bit harder to spot if you didn't have it all, uh, all next to each other, if you like. So, these two here, using my identities, make 1. Now, I've still got uh, the issue here of the t squared sine squareds, but... You can factorise t squared out and again leave yourself with sine squared t plus cos squared t, which will go to 1 again. All right, so that's gone. And what you're really left with then is just 1 plus t squared. Okay? Now remember, that's just the squaring and adding. To finish this off, it's Pythagoras, isn't it? So now we've got to square root that. So the actual speed of the particle is the square root of 1 plus t squared. That's quite tricky, okay, that part of the question. Right, then we're asked to calculate the momentum. So the momentum is mass times velocity. This is part B now, I think, isn't it? Scroll up a second and have a look. Uh, part B, uh, find the momentum back that the mass is 3. So it's uh, momentum equals mv. So it's three times your velocity vector. So that's uh, three lots of sine t plus t cos t in the i direction and three lots of cos t minus t sine t in the j direction. So that's easy enough. And then the last part of the question, again, a little bit awkward. At time t uh, is pi by 6, 
uh, the vector bi plus root 3j is perpendicular to r. So that means the dot product, scalar product, is 0. So uh, r dot, uh, and then we've got bi plus root 3j is 0 when t is pi by 6. So sub in pi by 6 in the place of, of t, and then multiply it by b and root 3, respectively. So that gives us um, pi by 6 sine pi by 6, and that's being multiplied by the b from here. Okay, I'm writing like that, not particularly very nice to write like that, but I'll do for now. Plus, we've got our pi by 6 cos pi by 6, and that's being multiplied by root 3, and that's got to come out as 0. Okay. Uh, now, I don't know what your y calculators will do with this one. My calculator doesn't do very much with it. It gives me some horrible decimals. But what you should get is uh, pi by 12 for all of this part. So pi b over 12. Okay. Pi by 6 sine pi by 6 just comes out as pi by 12. When you do pi by 6 cos pi by 6, now the neatest version of that is pi root 3 over 12. I think I got a horrible decimal, 0 0.453 something, 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 something. But that's also being times by root 3. Okay. Uh, the root 3s will cancel out. So if you did get a horrible decimal by here, if you now times it by, uh, through by root 3, the calculate will say a quarter pi. Now, given that we're working in terms of uh, denominators of 12, you should get 3 pi by 12 is the nicest possible version of that uh, second part. Then it's just a case of sort of cancelling out things. So we can multiply through by 12. It'll make no difference on the right anyway, so it's 0. We can divide through by pi. Again, it'll make no difference on the right because it's 0. And we're left with b plus 3 equals 0. So therefore, b must be minus 3. And that's probably the hardest vectors question there is because if you've got the product rule and there's so many parts to it, you've got that horrible expansion as well. Uh, when you do your squaring to get the speed.